Bang. Okay, here we go. Screen recording. What the various icons do, what the various warnings indicate. Uh, and this is uh, very much a beginner's guide. Try to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to start off on the extreme left-hand side of the screen, the H with a little arrow coming down. At this time, if I wanted the aircraft to land, I would press on that one. But I don't want it to land because I want to carry on with the demonstration. So we'll move upwards and we'll continue to go around in a clockwise fashion. Going straight upwards, there's an arrow pointing to the left. I can press on that arrow and it takes us to the Go Fly screen. So really we've gone backwards there. We don't really want to use that screen. Tap on Go Fly and we get the main flight screen back there. Next one is N mode. That indicates what flight mode I'm in. There are C, S and N. C is cinematic, which is your slowest speed and smoothest. N is for normal flying and S is for sport. And that will help you get somewhere quickly if you want to. The next thing we see is in flight. Well, that's fairly obvious really, so we won't worry too much about that. Moving along to the right, a number 56 in a circle. 55 it says now. 55% of battery left, and then also next to that is a number of minutes of flying time remaining. This will depend on a number of factors. How fast you're flying, how fast the wind is. I can also bring up a little bit more information. It'll be 10 minutes or just over until it automatically returns to home. 12.25 until a forced landing, 14.50 something until the battery is completely depleted. So we don't really want to see that. Moving to the right, the little bar graph shows me that there is a good signal coming down from the aircraft to the controller. If you start to lose bars or they start to go amber, be aware that the signal may be breaking up a little bit. Next to that is uh, two little sort of fan shapes in red. Now these are the indicators of the obstacle avoidance system. Red means they're switched off at the moment. I'll switch them on just to demonstrate. Okay, I've put the brake on. So now you'll see it's turned white. So that shows me that it is actually on. Moving along to the right again, satellite symbol under 32. That means that the drone has acquired 32 satellites, and so that means it's in a really good position to be stable. Next to the satellite, three little dots. Now the three little dots let you enter the settings and demonstrate, so there. Tap the three little dots. I've got safety, I've got control, I've got camera, I've got transmission. All of these things are quite detailed and I'm not going to go into them on the purpose of this demonstration, but I can do at a later stage. We're now dropping down. We've got a symbol which means either photographs, which is what it is on, or if I tap it, it can go to, sing to the different types of photographs available. Again, a lot of detail, I won't go into it just now. If I press the button on the top of the left-hand side, that photograph will change to video. And again, we've got various pieces of information. One of the ones that I will explain to you is the ability to flick the camera through 90 degrees so it goes into portrait mode as opposed to landscape, which is in at the moment. So portrait mode will take photographs or video which are suitable to put straight onto social media. Right, um, just below that symbol is a 1x and that shows you the number of times zoom. At the moment it's not zoomed anywhere, but if I use this top right hand scroll wheel, it zooms in and it will zoom in twice, two times, using 4K. If you want to zoom more, you can descale that down to 2.7K or 1080p and you can get up to four times zoom. The big red button is to start video recording, like so. Or indeed, it is also to stop video recording. And, of course, it's also, if you had to set it in photographic mode, like so, it will take a photograph. Click. There you go. Right, moving down to the little arrow below the um, picture shot. That will show you what you have just photographed. 
if you want to see it, and there's what I've done so far today. Something I don't use. Top left hand arrow to get back to the flying screen. Auto, the uh, camera is taking care of itself, it's doing its own exposures and all the rest of it formats. If I switch it to Pro, I would need to set up the parameters. But as you can see, without having an, a filter on, it's much, much too much blown out. Coming back across to the middle, just behind that stop sign, it says downward 10 point something feet, and that shows me how high the drone is. It's detected the ground. Moving to the left, it's 52 feet away from me. So I can increase that, and it'll, it'll show me how far many feet I'm away, and also what speed I'm doing in miles an hour. So we'll stop there. 10.5 feet high, and we'll go up. Da -da 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 -da. To 39 feet, 45 feet. Next to that is a little square. This does all sorts. If I tap on it, I get a bit of a map, and I can tap on that again and get the whole the map on the whole screen. Because I'm not connected to the internet at the moment, I only have basically a, a road plan. But that shows where I am in relation to the road. It also shows me by the red line how to get back home. And if I wanted to get back home, I can turn the arrow, which is the drone, to make it face towards me, and then fly straight forwards to get back home. There, pretty much straightforward. Gone too far. You can see as I'm turning, then the uh, the screen is turning. But we'll tick will come out of the map, and I can go to this here, which gives me a compass, and it shows me which is north, which way the drone is facing in relation to myself, the home point, and it also shows me the amount of uh, pitch or roll which the drone has on, and that would depend very much on the speed I'm doing, and also the wind speed. Just above that is a uh, type of a graph uh, showing the exposure. Now you can see that most of the light is in the center, halfway between the left hand side and the right hand side, and that means that my exposure is about right. It's an aid to getting your exposure right. It's not the be all and end all. If I track upwards, you'll probably find that some of the clouds may overexpose. No, they haven't, so just shows I don't really know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's about it. So here we are, we're 149 feet away, 46, 45 feet up in the air. There are the people behind us, and I think we're coming up to about 10 minutes waffle, so long overdue stop. So thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye for now, and in the future I hope to do some more details of camera settings and various other functions. Bye-bye for now.